Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, um, welcome, and recently I showed this knife in a video, and a bunch of people asked me, Matt, what is that thing? And uh, it is definitely an interesting knife, so I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. Hopefully I won't go on for too long. Um, and it, is it a Bowie knife? Is it a Bowie knife? Whichever you prefer to say. Um, uh, kind of. Okay, so to set the context, it is late 19th century, so it's an original old example. You can probably tell from the patina or coloration of the blade. It's It's been around for a while, and um, it was an interesting thing. Again, like many weird objects that come to me, it came to me with some um, swords in, in an auction lot. When you say a, a lot, incidentally, in reference to an auction, it means a, a, not necessarily a group, but an item in the listing. So a lot, say lot number one in a given auction, could just be one object, but lot one could also be several objects. Anyway, this came with some other objects, and um, I kind of, there wasn't a very good picture of it in the auction catalogue, but um, it, it was one of many items and it looked fairly interesting. And when it came to me, I was like, well, for a start, it was a lot bigger than I expected, because often in, um, catalogue photographs or just generally speaking photographs on the internet you can't always tell how big something is um, but uh, in this case it was it was a bigger weapon than I was expecting once I got it out um, and uh, so it's fairly large let's have it actually I never actually measured my weapon on uh, this one on uh, camera before I think or anywhere else it's well, it's 12 inches. It's a meaty 12 inches of blade there. Um, so, oh, what's 12 inches in metric? So for those of you who love the metric system, it's, what's it, about 30 centimetres? Yeah, so it's actually 31 centimetres. So it's a 31 centimetre blade. It's fairly big. Um, but what is most striking about it frankly is the style of the hilt as you can probably see it's a very characteristic style hilt with almost like a little uh, spherical ball like pommel with little faces on it it's got like a brass face on each side with what appears to be a rivet going through and then a, a sort of brass face on the end there again with another rivet visible and um, so that's quite characteristic and then the fact that it's got this kind of wasted um, section around here below below the head as it were um, and quite nicely the little finger quite naturally slips into there just underneath the head when you're holding it especially if you put the thumb up incidentally I mean I know that I would tend to hold a knife this way anyway with the thumb up because that's how I hold so many weapons that I use particularly sabers of course um, I use the thumb up grip a lot I realize some people might just grab grip it in a, in a hammer fist and still you know it's still very comfortable in a hammer fist what I would say is because it's a relatively slim grip you do kind of lose the edge alignment a little bit or you can lose the edge alignment if you grip it just in a hammer fist and I would prefer to put the thumb up the back in order to direct the edge. Um, so it's got this very characteristic style handle and um, but then a kind of bowie knife blade and so I started Google image searching for 19th century bowie knives. Um, initially I thought, oh there's another clue but I'll talk, I'll talk about that one in a second. Um, and I started searching for bowie knives with a handle of this shape and I thought maybe it's Mexican, something like that. Um, and I couldn't find anything, I just drew a blank. Now next up there is a maker on here which is um, A. Sourland, what is it, a Sourland. A Sauerland, I think, or Sauerland and Co. There we go. So it's a Sauerland and Co. in a circle forged on the side there. And I started searching for them, and uh, I found a little bit of information. And eventually, I found a knife which had a similar style hilt to this, uh, but it had a machete type blade rather than a Bowie type blade. And then off the back of that, so that was descri described as Argentinian, so from Argentina, um, or rather made for, so German made for the um, Argentinian market. Um, but um, essentially what I found out was that these types of knives were made both predominantly in Germany and in Britain um, because obviously there are large in the 19th century in the late 19th century very large knife producing centers in Solingen in Germany and in Sheffield um, and to an extent in Birmingham in England and really Germany and England as far as mass manufacturing of knives was concerned in the 19th century were like 
you know, powerhouses. I suppose you could liken it to Japanese electronics in the late 20th century. It was like the majority of knives in the world, whether you went to India, Africa, South America, or North America, um, you would find that the majority of knife blades seem to have been um, exported to those places from either Germany, predominantly Solingen, or from, uh, from England, predominantly Sheffield. Uh, and so Sheffield and Solingen were really famous for knives. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of the famous kind of American Bowie knives that survive are actually made in Sheffield because the, the manufacturing capacity of Sheffield in England at that point, remember it's the height of the British Empire when really Britain was the global superpower, Britain and Fra France probably as secondary. Um, and America at that point wasn't really a big manufacturing nation yet. It wasn't really until the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. So when we're looking at the 18, whether it's, you know, 1840s, the beginning of Bowie knives, right the way through to kind of 1900, when Bowie knives are still being made, and um, right the way through that period, really Britain and Germany were the mass manufacturers of um, knives, and incidentally of, of swords as well. And um, so yeah, so I found out that essentially this, this particular type of hilt was particularly popular in Argentina and probably some other South American um, countries as well. Um, I, I haven't done a ton of research on it, but it's a very characteristic hilt style. And you kind of think that, you know, in a way, those South American countries in the 19th century, a lot of them were, were forming and, and having various types of internal conflict, um, moving away from monarchies towards republics and all this kind of stuff. Um, and in fact, it's a very interesting period of history to study South America in, um, if you look at the wars in Brazil, for example. Um, but um, what I found interesting was a lot of their weapons they imported from other places. So they had, you know, French swords and German muskets and this kind of stuff um, and lots of American stuff some British stuff but um, what I found very interesting was that they had their own characteristic style of, of um, knife grip of hilt that you don't really find anywhere else very very um, peculiar thing just have a little look at the construction of it so it's a full width tang and the tang is actually exactly the same shape as the entire hilt so um, this is all what I'm touching here is tang it goes tang all the way there, all the way there, and all the way around to the end. The only bit of tang that isn't exposed is right at the end where that brass disc is. Um, and the, the grip scales are much like a kitchen knife or lots of types of bowie knife, um, or indeed a langmesser, are riveted right the way through the tang at uh, three main points. One, two, three. Um, so it's an incredibly strong and secure grip. Now, going back to the blade type, what was interesting, so I... Once I'd established what this was exactly and who, who it was made for, it seems that they were, most of them were made for people running things like plantations and stuff in South America um, as general purpose knives. They were essentially a tool. Um, however, the vast majority of them that I could find, in fact, almost all of them that I could find, had machete blades on. Not necessarily as big as a machete as you would usually consider, sort of almost a short sword length, but they were more sort of a bit bigger than this, but with a rounded chopping tip. A, a bit like a parang or um, uh, something like this, kind of almost Indonesian style knives for, for hacking through forest and presumably um, in some bits of South America, you know, bits of the Amazon and stuff like this. It's almost like an explorer's knife, but also used on plantations and by farmers um, and in some cases, by by military I suppose they probably had knives like this for for clearing camps and clearing their paths through um, on patrol and stuff um, so most of them had kind of like what I would describe as jungle knife uh, blades on them but this is a particularly unusual one because it's got what's very characteristically a bowie knife style blade so I can only conclude based on the maker the style of the grip um, and the style of the blade, that this was a kind of, not necessarily a custom piece in that not necessarily the person went and uh, asked for that particular type to be made, but that, that, that they realized that this type of grip was popular in, say, Argentina, for example, but this type of blade was also popular, the Bowie knife blade was also popular all over the place, um, 
because you could use it as a tool but you could also stab with it because the point is in line with the hilt and you can't really stab or defend yourself particularly well with stabbing anyway with a machete type blade so um, it's sort of like a hybrid and a very interesting piece and for that reason I've never sold it and I'll probably never sell it because it's just a really curious I've never seen another one exactly like it and it's 19th century you know it's essentially a 19th century bowie knife but it's not American it's not British it's something else and I find that really really interesting so it's essentially a foreign um, bowie knife or influenced by bowie knives um, sort of self-defense tool jungle knife type thing so a very interesting thing and it handles beautifully and it's made lovely one of the details you get with traditionally made um, knives that you often don't get with modern certainly not with factory produced knives in general is if you look at the tang there, um, hopefully you'll be able to see, although I do understand it's very dark, so the patina, you'll see that it's very thick at the top of the tang and it actually distally tapers, much like the blade tapers down here, like a sword blade. Um, the tang itself tapers and gets thinner down here. And I love that detail that you get from a forged item that you don't get from a CNC or laser cut item that's cut out of a flat piece of steel. A forged item has that, you know, they, you have distal taper just very naturally. It's very natural to produce a blade with distal taper like that. And equally the tang has distal taper. And somehow I find it often produces a nicer feeling in the hand, weapons that have got that type of distal taper. And they have mass where they need it and then they have lightness where they don't need mass. Um, so yeah, a very interesting style of grip, very comfortable. I prefer it with a thumb up grip. Obviously useful in, in fighting or self-defense um, as a bowie knife, but equally just as useful for chopping up wood or chop, chopping your way through vines and jungle or chopping up meat or anything, really. It's a general purpose. And when you actually think about it, it's very close to something like an Anglo-Saxon sax um, in its functionality and what you could use it for. It has also got a fairly decent edge on it. I've not sharpened it, but you can see that it definitely was very sharp at one point. Um, cheers folks, I hope that was of interest. Um, if I come across any other interesting um, historical knives, I'll definitely show them to you. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.